name's Peter, and this is my idea for heating hot water for free with a wood stove. It works on a simple principle, that is hot water rises, convection, and I have gone ahead and fitted my wood stove with items I'll describe to take advantage of it by way of thermal siphoning. This is my Stiebel solar tank. There will be a solar panel, or a couple of solar panels actually hooked into that sometime here in the spring. But for right now, uh, my hot water wood stove system is feeding into this. That, in turn, feeds into an electric hot water heater. The hot water coming out of the stival is the cold water feed to the electric hot water heater. Uh, I've been using this to heat hot water all winter long. Um, other than testing the electric hot water heater, it hasn't been on yet. The system works very effectively. Um, the hot water heater now is feeding into a radiant floor system standard radiant floor system. It also feeds my domestic hot water and um, actually just to be sure, I mean, it has been a problem, but to be sure I put a mixing valve in, a tempering valve, uh, to be sure that the water doesn't get too hot. Now again, I'm using the storage tank before the electric hot water heater. If you're just after domestic hot water, you could go directly into the hot water heater feeding your hot line, your top line, into the, teeing into the T out on the top and feeding your return line into the cold water feed out at the bottom. If you do that, you absolutely should put a tempering valve in because you're going to be dealing with water a lot hotter than 120 degrees, I can almost guarantee it. Um, because it is an elevated tank system and taking advantage of thermal siphon, uh, when the tanks are cold, if I had gone away for a while and come back and this tank is down to whatever the normal temperature is, probably 55 degrees, um, there's not going to be any water flow in the loop other than the water that's settled in the loop. It's not going anywhere. because, And if you have the hot water tank on at that point, there's not going to be any draw on that either. There's no way for the hot water to come down the upper line and could feed through there. In any event, what uh, drives this whole system and what I spent the most time working on and in fact, I'm going to probably start manufacturing, depending upon how popular this proves to be on YouTube, are these coils. Uh, they're three-quarter copper pipe, and they're fitted very tightly around the wood stove flue pipe. Uh, this is actually my first prototype right here. And as you've seen by some of the other videos on YouTube, it's very difficult to form three-quarter, even soft copper, in a six-inch radius without crimping it. Uh, it's very easy to ruin an awful lot of expensive copper pipe. Ask me, I can tell you how. Um, I formed this piece by borrowing a tool called a yellow jacket. It's a plumber's ratcheting hand tool meant to make 90 degree bends around a mandrel. It took me two days with that tool to make this thing, my prototype, and I couldn't write for a week afterwards from the cramp. Anyways, once I fired this thing up, it, it was way beyond my expectations way beyond my expectations. Now, that is what is sitting right there, and I've actually taken away the insulation on the bottom. One of the key factors I found was you have to insulate that coil, or it doesn't work. And what I did initially was simply wrap it in aluminum foil. You can see that underneath. Let me pull this back a bit. So there's your, your coil there. I removed the bottom insulation to show you that. And then next, I just wrapped simple um, unfaced insulation around it, and I've held it with mechanics wire, soft, bendable wire. And that's all I did initially. It works fine. Eventually, I will build a shell to put on there to make it look finished. Um, and I've also bought some mineral wool, Roxel, uh, to use in lieu of the fiberglass. The problem is the Roxel seems to want to break apart rather than just simply mold around there. And I've run this thing so hot that, um, well, let me show you something. The insulation on the cold water return back down. See the cracking? That's nothing to do with the hot water in the pipe. That's from the radiant heat from the wood stove. This aluminum foil stopped that entirely. But, um, you know, here in New Hampshire, middle of January, when you're running one of these big old wood stoves, they're putting out a lot of heat. Uh, in any event, this coil, the water's rising by way of convection. And I equipped my system with a circulator, as you can see, just to be sure, you know, because I was testing and developing a lot of things. That circulator is controlled 
by this aquastat that you see here, just a conventional Honeywell aquastat, and a temperature and pressure gauge, so I could be able to monitor uh, what was going on. Right now, I fired this up about an hour ago. It's uh, April, so we don't need much heat in Hampshire right now, but I fired it up just for the video. That water is going out at 150 degrees. Oh, excuse me, that's the pressure. Yeah, that's the pressure. I'm running about 20 pounds pressure. I start with zero in the system. Right now it's up to about 20 pounds. Uh, the aquastat is on. I mean, the uh, circulator is on by the aquastat. It's going out at 120 degrees. And you don't really need this in the system, but if it return here, it's coming back in at about 110. Um, this is it simply a boiler drain. That's how I fill my system. And on the hot water feed out line at the top, behind these tanks, I've got two T's. The first one is very tall and it's capped, and I use that as an expansion piece. I don't know if you can see it in the video. Just beyond that is another T with a uh, normal hot water tank pressure blow off valve. Here's a, uh, a schematic of it that I made up, and I'm no artist. Here's your wood stove. Here is the copper coil that I'm prepared. I've prepared. I've got more, as you can see. Uh, the line feeds out. There's the aquastat, which controls the circulator, and the temperature and pressure gauge that you're seeing next to it. The hot water is climbing. Again, it climbs the coil as it heats. It's climbing here, and I fed it into the secondary coil in the stable tank in reverse. Normally, you'd put the hot water in the bottom of the coil. I fed the hot water into the top of the coil. So as it's traveling in, it's giving water off to the storage tank, which in turn cools the water inside that coil. Now it's, it's, it's uh, sinking because cool water sinks. It sinks back down and it drives this system. Again, the circulator is here. This time of year, I need to run it with the aquastat. I've got it set down to 130 before it comes on. In the wintertime, I've got the aquastat set for about 150 degrees because there were quite a few days in January and February where you're running a stove consistently and warm that I would have um, in this tank, my 80 gallon stable tank, I would have a tank full of 150 to 170 degree water. Uh, normally it's, yeah, it stays around 130 on conventional weather, but when it was really cold and windy and I was working the stove hard, I have seen 150 to 175 degree water. Um, and again, this in turn, I don't, <laughs> That in turn it feeds into my hot water tank and it tempers it pretty well there. But if you were using a hot water tank here rather than a storage tank preheating for an electric tank, you would definitely want the tempering valve. Um, again, the system works way beyond my belief. I'm going to be having hot water all year round once I get my solar panels for nothing more than the wood that I was already burning to heat my... my uh, garage space and my apartment upstairs. Now, the reason for this video, one of the reasons, is to judge whether I can make a business out of this. Um, these coils are available for $450. I had them manufactured, that's what it cost me. I'm hoping to be able to market them for that after I build a machine. Building a machine is going to take a lot of time and money. I had to judge the interest. If there's interest, or if there's questions, or anything else, I can be reached at convection.coil at yahoo.com. Again, convection.coil at yahoo.com. Thank you for your attention.